In this video, I outline a very simple but life-changing budget. It is the system that I'm currently using and I love it. For us, a budget isn't about restricting or depriving us, but it actually allows us to spend money on the things that excite us without any guilt or regret. And I'll show you exactly how we achieve this in this video. This budget is simple because it only involves three questions. How much do I want to spend? How much do I want to save? And do I need a sinking fund for unexpected expenses? So step one was deciding upon how much you want to spend. I suggest making this amount super achievable at first because we want to experience success. This system is similar to a zero-based budget, which is where all income is allocated to expenses, debt repayments, or spending. It's similar to an envelope system. Traditionally, this would look like allocating certain amounts to your chosen categories each month. Every dollar has a purpose. This system is a little bit different. So this approach is a more fluid approach to a zero-based budget. It's a more simplistic approach. You can choose a set amount to live off each month and you can be flexible with how that money is allocated. For us, we have decided that the amount is my husband's income, so that means we are saving my income. So our chosen amount is $5,600 each month. The best part about this approach is it could simply be tracked in a bank account. But of course, I do like to track everything as you know. So I use my Excel budget tracker that is available in my Etsy store. I use the purple version, but it is available in four other colors too. There is a link in the video description. Step two is to decide how much you want to save. This will be dependent on how much you chose to spend. Remember, if you're just starting out, this might not be a lot. As I mentioned, it's best to try and not overdo it at the beginning as you're working out what is achievable and what isn't. So this is simply income minus spending equals how much you're going to save. This is similar to a savings rate if you were to calculate it as a percentage. Step three is deciding if you need a sinking fund for unexpected expenses. This may be needed if your expenses can vary each month. It's a bit like a buffer account. A sinking fund is a strategic way of saving where you set aside a little bit of money each month for a planned expense. And at the moment, we just have one sinking fund, which is our holiday fund. Although I think I really need a second one for just those unexpected expenses, especially household repairs. I really like having a sinking fund for booking holidays because when we do book a holiday, it doesn't blow the monthly budget as we can withdraw the money from the holiday account as that money has already been allocated to holidays previously. There are two ways that you could implement your sinking fund. You could allocate a certain amount from your chosen spending amount each pay period to your sinking fund or you could transfer what is left over at the end of each pay period into the sinking fund so that when a big expense does arise you are not pulling money from savings. This is the habit that we're trying to limit. So now I'm going to chat about how this works for us and the best part about this system that I love. So here's my real life example. We have decided to live off my husband's wage of $5,600 a month. So that means we're saving my income. I like to limit non-essential purchases until the end of the month, just to make sure we don't go over that amount. And this also fosters delayed gratification, which we'll get to. So using my budget tracker, I like to check in before the end of the month just to see how we are going. And this time I did check in a little bit late on the 25th of April. And when I inputted everything, we had spent $3,762 in the month so far. But do remember this strategy doesn't need to be tracked through Excel or anything like that. It could just be tracked through a bank account. We have our expenses bank account and I do like to keep a $1,000 buffer in there for just in case. So that means we still have $1,838 to spend for the month with about one week left. And if you are enjoying this video so far, don't forget to give it a thumbs up or write a comment because it really does help to support my channel. So after knowing we still had $1,800 left for the month, I did go ahead and book some tickets to a monster truck show for my son. Normally I would wait till the end of the month, but I didn't want to miss out on these tickets. And this doesn't always happen, but I did book a holiday in April, which was $2,730. So we'll also need to decide how much of that will come out of this month's budget and how much will come out of the holiday fund. I also like to check in and see where we're at with food spending because that can get a bit out of control. And so far we're going okay. Okay, it's magically the end of the month now and I've put in all of our spending and we have $694.93 left. And this is my favorite part about this process. I now get to choose how I spend that money. I normally decide if it goes to the holiday fund, be paying an amount to a future bill, or buying something that I've had my eye on. If there is quite a bit left over, I like to add to our holiday fund. This month is different because I did book a holiday, so a lot of that leftover money will be going to the holiday expense for that holiday. 
If there is a small amount left over, I generally send this amount to an incoming bill via BPAY. I like doing this as it gives future me in the next month a bit of a head start on the budget and it might lead to having more money left over at the end of the following month. Or I spend the money on something that I've been waiting to buy all month or maybe even for the past two months if there wasn't enough money left over at the previous month, which this month was those monster truck tickets. So the best part about this approach is that this is fostering delayed gratification and I'm a big fan. Delayed gratification is waiting a set amount of time before buying something that is not an essential purchase. It helps to limit impulse buying. In my example, I am waiting a month, if not two months, if there wasn't enough money in the previous month. Many purchases, you may think you want them at the time, but if you wait, you realize you don't. And if you do still want it, it makes it even more satisfying when you do make that purchase. So here is how I decided to split up that money at the end of the month. $630 went to the holiday. $64.93 went to our water bill and nothing to other purchases because we did already spend a fair bit. On the odd occasion, there might not be enough money in the budget and I might need to find a little bit of extra money. If I need a little extra help, I withdraw some of my money from my cash rewards or shop back. I held back from signing up to these programs for so long because I thought the cash back would be tiny, but it can actually be quite substantial. I generally check between cash rewards and shop back to see which one has the best deals. I do have referral links in my video description if you haven't signed up yet. As I said, I like to use both to compare deals and I mostly use them on travel and holiday bookings. An example of a comparison at the time of making this video was cash rewards had a cash back of 5% for Agoda. When Shopback had a 12% cash back for Agoda and then normal cash back for Agoda is 7%. So it's always worth checking both. And remember, these small savings might not seem like a lot, but they do add up because to save $10,000 a year, we need to save $27.40 a day. Or if you're aiming for $5,000 a year, that's $13.70 a day. I thought a nice little reminder if you needed a prompt about how those daily savings could add up is changing your phone passcode to 2740 for $27.40 a day or 1370 for $13.70 a day. Thanks for listening. Don't forget you can also find me on Instagram and Facebook.